What's up, guys? It's Rhino Live on Monday. Big eventful uh, weekend in the state of South Carolina, particularly. Uh, Dustin Johnson wins the Masters and then followed up by Will Muschamp being let go by the University of South Carolina. But uh, before I get into that, I want to talk to you about uh, Revolution Nutrition and Dusty Ben. Right beside Old South Catery, uh, my favorite spot on Sunday to get the Sunday buffet. Charles Hatfield and his crew do a hell of a job. Um, Revolution Nutrition is one of these news places that sells the uh, healthy shakes and the healthy teas. You know, you see uh, maybe the pictures on Facebook of people getting these teas that are blue and green and all kind of flavor and, and things added in that's healthy, not just a regular old tea. Like I like to drink sweet tea. But anyway, I had inquired about a uh, the Fruity Pebble Shake. I thought that sounded great. But I was kind of leery because usually these things taste like powder with a little bit of uh, uh, Fruity Pebbles sprinkled in. But I'm going to tell you what, that's not the case with this thing. This thing right here tastes like a milkshake. You can taste a little bit of protein in there, a little nutrition, and then a cup of Fruity Pebbles. It's like drinking a bowl of cereal. I mean, a thick bowl of cereal. It's good. So this week, I'm going to roll up the Revolution Nutrition, do a little sample, going to get a couple of the shakes, maybe a couple of the teas, let you know what I think is best. Anyway, let's get back to the sporting world. First of all, Dustin Johnson, uh, you know, came back from the COVID break, uh, shot back-to-back -back 80s, thought his game was in disarray, and uh, missed the cut, and was wondering what's going to happen with this fella. You know, is, is he at the back end of his career? I think he's... At the time, he had won 15, 15 years in a row he'd won a tournament on tour. And, and looking like maybe that's the end of it. And then he came back and then wins and second place finishes, top 10s. And, uh, you know, winning it all, winning the FedEx Cup, money, 15 million, I think. And then a couple months later, comes on in and wins his first green jacket in Augusta. Hell of a performance. Dude's just kind of cool as a cucumber, man. Doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. You know, never says anything, makes a bad shot, just kind of shrugs it off. You know, walking around like um, the Icy Bear, big long torso, look like his hips are on swivels. He just kind of saunters around, does his thing. But him and his caddy, man, his brother uh, Austin make a hell of a combination. You know, I, I don't even think Dustin Johnson really pays attention much to anything. Uh, Austin gives him a yardage. He puts it up there within 10 feet, gives him the, uh, the line on the putt knocks it up there knocks it in or knocks it close and just keeps on going and unlike most guys this week he never really had a bad hole you know he may he may hit one in the bunker but he two putt for for bogey and and he stopped the bleeding there so props to him beating a great field of uh, McElroy, rom the shambo imploded you know beat justin thomas all those guys to win his first jacket uh it's pretty cool you know not because he's from south carolina because it ain't like he's hanging around on St. Andrews Road or nothing. Just because he's from Irmo, but still a cool story. Cool dude. And uh, props to DJ. On the other side, Will Mushamp gets let go. Where the, And I think it's like a 75-25 split among the fans. Like 75% is like he's got to go. After these last three performances, after getting blown out by LSU, you know, after not looking good this weekend against Ole Miss, against Texas A&M, I mean, it's somewhat embarrassing when you hire a defensive guru who can't coach defense or the players that play for him can't play defense. I mean, it's just what it is. You're giving up 50-plus points in three games. You give up 700 yards of offense to Ole Miss. And, you know, Ole Miss is 2-4. and four. It ain't like uh, this is the 95 Florida team. You know, it ain't like, you know, Danny Werfel's out here just tossing it around or you know, it ain't a juggernaut. You know, it's not Tua Tonga Valoa out here just slinging it around. I get that. But, you know, this is just, you know, Matt Corral or whatever, average sized guy. This ain't a great Ole Miss team, obviously. They're two and four coming in. And then to give up 700 yards, not being able to make a stop. They went for it on fourth down every time, just about because they just didn't care. They didn't think South Carolina could stop them, and they couldn't. So we had to make a change. Um, unfortunately, Ray Tanner hamstrung him with a buyout. I think they got off around 13 to 15 million, which a lot of people balk at that, but 13 to 15 million dollars in the athletic department is not that much. In this year it is, but I mean, 
you know, South Carolina benefits from being in the SEC to get 30, 40, 50 million dollars in bowl season. There's still a lot of donors paying money here. There's probably some donors offered money to pay out to get rid of Muschamp. But now, where do you go from here? This season's pretty much a wash. Um, unfortunately, Mike Bobo's the uh, uh, interim head coach, so you know you're going to get Colin Hill, which he played really well this weekend against a team that's given up 33 points against everybody they played except Vanderbilt. It's hard to say whether it was Colin Hill or the lack of Ole Miss defense. Problem I got with that is it doesn't help you going forward. You know, if Luke Doty is going to be your quarterback next year, he needs to be under center. If Ryan Hillensky is going to be your quarterback, he needs to be under center. Those guys need to get the reps. Colin Hill is going to walk out of here in, in, in three or four weeks, never be heard again, and, and has no benefit for the University of South Carolina. Thanks for coming. Appreciate that. You know, but, you know, you come in at three and eight, and, hell, you're going to leave worse than that. So that's unfortunate. So where do we go from here? A lot of people say, well, Billy Napier has got to be first on that list. Billy Napier played at Furman. That's good South Carolina roots. Coached at Clemson under Tommy Bowden. That probably don't help your case much. Um, under Has been under Nick Saban, which does help some. And, and has had an outstanding uh, record at Louisiana Lafayette. Or Louisiana, whatever they call themselves now. But does that translate? Does beating Troy and Georgia State and Appalachia State, those likes, does that translate into being able to um, – Winning the SEC? I don't know. It's hard to say. Does that translate to winning at USC? That's hard to say. So Napier is up there. Jamie Chadwell down at Coastal Carolina is undefeated, beating teams to death, um, doing a, a real good job. But, I mean, they're, they're beating those, that same competition. You know, it's hard to say can he recruit four-star, five-star guys, play Alabama, Auburn, Florida, Tennessee, Georgia, Texas a and I don't know. Is it worth the risk? You're not in a you're not in a good situation right now as it is, so I don't know. I mean, he's good at recruiting like three stars and undervalued guys and making them better, but can he make four stars into five stars and make five stars into NFL guys? I don't know. That's a tough call. Um, some of the other guys, you freeze, you freeze ain't coming. You freeze can't come back in the SEC. You see, you freeze has got the death penalty. As far as that, you ain't gonna see you freeze at South Carolina. See, y'all can quit that. Yeah, he's great at Liberty. Congratulations. He ain't coming. Some of the bigger names. Urban Meyer, of course. If Urban Meyer says he'll come, you call up Dollar Moore and some of your big boosters and say you need a loan. Give him the money. I don't like Urban Meyer personally. Uh, I think he's a wimp. But the fact is, he won at Utah, he won at Florida, and he won at Ohio State. Can't knock that. And you need a, a heavy hitter like that to come in and reconstruct this football team. He can get a coaching staff. He can do some things. Um, another guy, Bob Stoops, I don't know if he wants to coach anymore. You know, I mean, he left a Oklahoma program when they was, you know, pretty much running the Big 12, and it, I don't know why you would leave to want to come back to rebuild. Then again, a guy like Les Miles left LSU and turns around and goes to Kansas and can't beat nobody. So he's a possibility. Les Miles would have been another possibility, maybe, if he hadn't shit to bed in Kansas. Um, James Franklin is an interesting guy for me. Uh, he's won in the SEC at Vanderbilt, but he's getting uh, he's getting blown out pretty good at uh, Penn State. He's 0-3, so I don't know. if Maybe if he leaves, maybe he'd come here. I, didn't, I hadn't heard much heat on him. You know, a guy like Jim Harbaugh, probably going to get fired at Michigan. Do you want that guy coming here? Is You know, we, we only really expect seven or eight wins down here. And that's what he does. He gets about seven or eight wins. We don't expect to win a national championship. We don't expect to beat Ohio State and Wisconsin. And we don't really expect to beat Alabama on a regular basis. So, you know, come in here and, and give us seven, eight wins. Jim Harbaugh might be on that list. There's a lot of guys, man. There's a I've seen lists. I've seen several lists with, with percentages. You just don't know where those guys are. Like, you know, Billy Napier might be happy where he's at. You know, Sean Elliott's one of them that – it, it, it would have been nice to see how it worked out. Had they beat the Citadel and only lost to Clemson by like five that year, Sean Elliott might have been able to make a case. I mean, he's got the fire. Um, he's a local guy. I think he does a really good job coaching. But I don't know that you can – at this point, man, you need to call 911. You can't really call a project right now. You need to call somebody who can come in. You need a doctor to fix this thing. 
So I'm sure they're going to go heavy hitter, heavy hitter, heavy hitter. Then again, just like last time, they waited a while and then turned around and got stuck with a with a guy who was fired at Florida. So, you know, definitely no Ron Zooks, uh, none of those guys, none of these guys who have been fired recently. You don't need that. I mean, everybody says you could have got Tom Herman at the time. Tom Herman is really a, a failure at Texas for what their standards are. Uh, Luke Fickle at, at Cincinnati. Maybe. I don't know what Cincinnati pays. I don't know what that comparison to South Carolina is. Maybe he wants to get into a Power Five. Cincinnati's going to win a lot of games, just like Central Florida did, but just like Scott Frost. He could have stayed at Central Florida and probably won 10, 11 games every year and claimed to be a national champion, but he wanted to go to Nebraska. Maybe Luke Fickle, maybe he'll want to step down and, and step up and be in the Power Five and coach at uh, South Carolina. Luke Fickle right now is probably – the best combination of winning and uh, on a on a bigger scale. So you know, Luke Fickle uh, would be a great pick. There's a lot of guys that's going to come out the woodworks. Honestly, I don't think you keep anybody on that staff. I mean, I don't know all the all the ins and outs of the coaches, but I don't keep Bobo. No reason to keep Tavares Robinson. I mean, he, 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 if, if if defense is your forte and your team's going to give up 50 points in the last three weeks. You're not good at what you're doing, either recruiting or coaching or, or developing players. So definitely out on that. Bobby Bentley is an interesting one. He's, you know, he's a coach, a head coach in high school around here. He's, he's been on the staff of Spurrier and now with Will Muschamp. Maybe you keep him, maybe you don't. Oh, yeah. And Shane Beamer. People talk about Shane Beamer. He was on the staff as a special teams coach. He's out of Oklahoma uh, as a tight ends coach, assistant head coach, something other. I need a guy who's coached more than four people at one time. You know, I, I, tight ends coach is great, but I mean, you co you're coaching four guys who mainly block 75% of the time. I need a guy who's been in the mix. Kendall Bryles is a good. Art Bryles' son that was from Baylor. Kendall Bryles, I think, said uh, Oklahoma now calling plays. That guy, young guy, that one out there, it's a possibility. People bringing Tony Elliott's name up. I don't want Tony Elliott, not because he's from Clemson, but because I believe he's a product of the system. You know, um, he may be a good coach, Chad Morris was that same way. You know, he got destroyed at Arkansas. He was a great mind, but if you don't have Deshaun Watson and C.J. Spiller and, and Mike Williams and Travis Etienne, are you really that great? It's kind of like Gus Malzahn. Gus Malzahn was an offensive genius at Auburn with Cam Newton, a quarterback. With, with Bo Nix, he no count. So, I mean, you can only... I think coaches get a little bit too much credit. Cam Newton, I believe I could have called a place. Quarterback keep six yards. Quarterback keep six yards. Uh, handoff, handoff, quarterback keep, first down. I mean, Gus Malzahn, nah. Chad Morris, and then Jeff Scott goes to South Florida, and they get beat up pretty good too. Um, definitely, and Venables, Venables don't want to be a head coach. Venables, $2.5 million, best job in the world. Coach 30 players, that's all he's got to do. He worries about 30 guys. He don't have to worry about 85 guys plus walk-ons plus PR plus any of this shit. He just – he coaches 30 guys, the best four-star, five-star, and then about six or eight white guys. Usually uh, two of his sons and two or three Herb Streets and a couple of Sweeney's. But the majority of his players come in as pro athletes. So it's not a hard job. Venables don't want this job. Venables make $2.5 million and don't have to answer no questions. His defense really on point most of the time. So – Anyway, for me, if I'm looking, Luke Fickle's the first guy I call. Urban Meyer is on that list, but I got to see if he's got any interest. Bob Stoops, possibly, and then we'll work it out on through there. Um, I don't really think you get a mid-major guy right now. You know, I just, I just don't, you know, but, you know, we just want to win eight games. So whoever can get us eight or nine wins, we'll take. So anyway, that's my take. Props to DJ. Props to – uh. Uh, university for finally making a move or getting rid of a, a, a flat tire on the team. You know, people say you keep you keep firing coaches, you're never gonna build nothing. Well, if you keep riding on flat tires, you ain't gonna go forward either. So, time to change, take the flat tire off, pump it up, put a new, fresh new Goodyear Goodyear on that thing, and get this uh, cockaboose rolling in the right direction. So, be interesting to see. Stay tuned this week. We'll try to get a couple reviews. Definitely going to go to Revolution Nutrition, try out some teas and shakes. And uh, y'all have a good week. Thanks for watching. Talk to y'all later.